You know, normally in a TED talk, I'd try to bedazzle you with some octopus shifting shape, changing colors, beautiful jellyfish with bioluminescence. I'm not going to do that today, not to punish you, but just because I think I, I just want to say a few words on my own behalf, some of the things I've been thinking about. Um, oh, the bottom got clipped off. Uh, it says, uh, I don't know why I don't care about the bottom of the ocean, but I don't. Uh, <laughs> And uh, that's from the New, York, New Yorker magazine from maybe the 70s. I got into this field about mid-70s. So I lived with that, um, lived with that uh, cartoon. And uh, especially since considering what's going on now, I wonder who the joke is on. You know, I grew up in the Finger Lakes up in central New York. And when I grew up, I had Jacques Cousteau. You know, that's how I knew about the ocean. I knew. I thought the oceans, I knew there were sharks and whales and French guys and speedos swimming around. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, I had no idea that most of the ocean had been unexplored. And it was a National Geographic article that got me into this ocean business. And I was in, I was late in, I was in my mid-20s. So I was uh, fairly late getting into this game. And uh, quickly found out that uh, you know, the, the last explorer didn't die in the 19th century, you know, in the 1800s. It was, we still are exploring this planet. Most of the Earth, and this is cliche, and it just rolls off our tongue, is covered by ocean, 70%. Average depth is about two miles, okay? And still to this day, still to this, I've been in this business over 30 years, we've only explored about 5% of the world beneath the sea, the deep ocean, the floor that they don't care about. When we go there, we get glimpses of this incredible world, the floor of the ocean. It's not that mud-covered place. A lot of it is. But that's a world that has the world's greatest mountain range. It's got the world's, uh, by far, the mid-ocean ridge, 50,000 miles long, tens of thousands of peaks higher than the, uh, than the Alps. It's got thousands and thousands of valleys deeper and wider than the Grand Canyon. You know, we've been to a few of them. It's got underwater rivers. In the Gulf, there's one. It's got underwater lakes. Underwater lakes, where you can sit there in the submarine, look out the window, and see waves across the seafloor. It's a separate body of water, super salty body of water. And it's got its own ec ecosystem around there, you know, all, all at the bottom of the ocean. And most importantly, in a world where we thought there should be no life at all, because it's very deep, no sunlight's ever been there, we find more life in that world than in the tropical rainforest, in terms of diversity and density. These are all discoveries, all in that few percent that we've explored. And you have to wonder what's in that other 90-something percent. You know, is it just empty? Did we get all the good stuff, or is it full of surprises? <laughs> we know it's full of surprises, you know? And we're just discovering it. We don't know how it works. We don't know how it works, especially a mile deep. We don't know how it works. That, that's why this is a problem. You know, now there's a monster loose on the, about a mile deep on the floor of the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, I show it in terms of the crack in here, this multi-tentacled monster with these tentacles reaching out. And this one is wrapping those tentacles around the ocean environment, the air, the Gulf inhabitants of the Gulf Coast, their, ec their uh, economic system, the ecosystems. And what worries me a little bit now is that lawyers are showing up and giving, <laughs> are gonna make this monster a little bit stronger. And in fact, our activities in the past few months, you know, we're 70 days into this, have done nothing more but to irritate this creature, you know, we, with, with dispersants in the deep sea. What's that all about? So we need to attack that monster. You know, President Obama said, President Obama said, here we go, uh-oh, can you advance it back there? This is not advancing. Yeah. We will fight this spill with everything we've got as long as it takes. And I believe the president, and, and certainly there's tens of thousands of people at work now in the Gulf that are dedicated to, to slaying that beast and to cleaning up that venom that's getting its way. And make no mistake about it, it won't stop at the shores of the Gulf. That venom will pervade our everything that we do in this, in this country and, and maybe even globally. But you know, again, we're operating a world where we, it's only, you know, the stuff we see is at the surface against the beach. That's bad enough. What, what's deep in the ocean, we don't know about yet. So here we are, day 70, and, and I, I hear in, in these quiet little meetings, and like and Jim Cameron called this group together, and it wasn't a group of just friends, it was a group of some of the brightest people in ocean exploration and engineering and science. And the concerns are growing about what's coming up next. You know, the, the use of dispersants. 
the uh, integrity of the blowout protector. The relief wells, you know, I, I just read today in an article that I said that the risk was high, that the relief well will blow out. I'm not a well expert, I never said that. I said that there's concern about the blowout, about the relief wells, about how, how uh, well they'll do. I mean, how much risk is associated with that. You know, who's calling these, these shots? Who's making these decisions in the deep ocean especially? I know Admiral Allen, the National Incident Commander, very highly accomplished, very highly acclaimed, doing an incredible job with the stuff that we know about up at the surface. But at the deep ocean, who's in charge? It's a different world. There's someone telling him, hey, this is a different world down there, man. It's a small club that knows that world, and especially how to fight a monster like this on the deep ocean floor. The other thing is that here we are again about 70 days in, and we, the fundamental questions about this creature we don't know. What's coming out of that well? What's the mix of oil, gas, the toxic elements? What's the flow rate? It's all over the place. You know, are we looking at 20,000 of these every single day, these barrels up here, something less, something more? We've, we've been actually working on that at Woods Hole, and we think we're getting a good handle on it. But pretty fundamental stuff. Where is it gone? Where is it going? You know, that, that means uh, getting down there, mapping in the midwater, uh, looking for plumes making models based on winds and waves and currents in the Gulf. I mean, we always have, the, we have this fear about the, the, about the uh, Gulf Stream, about the uh, Gulf Stream bringing it up the, up, the, uh, up the East Coast. And what will the impact be? Oh boy, you know, that's a tough one. You're going to hear later on from Susan Shaw, I know, about a little bit about the impact of some of this stuff. Pretty serious stuff. Why don't we know? Um, this is from Woods Hole, and not meant to be all we've got. You know, we need to have this leader, especially in the deep sea, uh, someone that can attack, that not just respond. You know, we need to put this thing to an end quickly in the deep sea and find out what's going on. And that, that person has to have an army. You know, I, I wonder about this. We're fighting this with all we've got, but some of the best ocean warriors I know, some of the best ones I know are still sitting in their labs wondering what's going on. You know, I, I know stuff is going on, and I'll tell you how to get to, to that, but it, it's unclear, again, what the big plan is. These are some of the tools, some of the weapons. I don't, I don't want to keep going on this war analogy, but it is a war. It's another Gulf War, in effect, you know, and sadly, you know, we're almost waging life right now on, on life. Uh, we're waging war on life in the Gulf, you know, on the, on the, on the animals that actually live, live there. This is a smattering of robots, autonomous vehicles, robotic vehicles, uh, observing systems. You heard a little about this earlier. We need this stuff. This is akin to the weather systems except under the water. We should have had this stuff in place already, but back to that little tea party. You know, I don't care about the bottom of the ocean. We need to care, uh, and, and, and we need to change the way we do things. We need to change our emphasis. We need to care about our ocean environment, not just say it, we gotta do something about it. And we need to make our political leaders understand that. Um, this system needs to go into place. You know, we, can use some, we are using some of these vehicles right now to assess what's going on and to model the future, but this isn't the last time something like this is going to happen. So we also need a rapid response capability. I show you this. This is the night vision of Earth, and it's, uh, I like this because the white lights in the United States, that's us doing our thing. From this far out in space during the daytime, we hardly show up. At nighttime, we light the place up. You know, we need to find a better way of doing that, and we can do that. You know, the, the people, the smarts are in this country to change the way we light, light, ourselves, light ourselves up. Here's a, another reason why. Clickety-click. Okay, if you can see this, you know, the Gulf water, it looks like a lot of water when you stand at the shore and look out over the horizon. The oceans do the same. We took all the water off the earth to find out how much water is really on the planet. And so if you take all the water off the earth, that's what you end up with right there, that ball. Okay, not a lot of water. I said two miles deep. That's a lot, you can't do that with scuba gear. You gotta have submarines and stuff. But two miles deep, the Atlantic Ocean, 5,000 miles across. Two by 5,000. Okay, it's thin as frost on a glass. Pacific Ocean, 12,000 by two. So if that was a basketball, the amount of water on that basketball would be just about the size of a ping pong ball. There is not a lot of water on this planet. On the far right side is fresh water. That's a whole different conversation we have to have sometime. That's all the fresh water on the Earth. The Gulf water falls somewhere in between those two. Not a lot of water in the Gulf of Mexico. What can you do? What, what I think the best thing you can do, stay involved, Ted's great, man, what a, what a wonderfully influential group. You're part of the family, stay involved, follow along on Ted. 
uh, go to that Consortium for Oceanographic Leadership. Uh, just published a report, scientific report, the real official scientific report about uh, what we think is going on inside the Gulf, especially in, in, in the deep Gulf. Um, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, we've got a page set up for oil spill. And then for the first time in my life, I'm tweeting, so, and my name, Gallotar. <laughs> so, uh, Jim Cameron, sorry about that. But, uh, if you follow me at Gallotar, I'll post stuff as I hear it continuously. <laughs> 